Um, my name is Mr Monk, welcome to Chobham Academy. I'm the Director and Head of, uh, of Learning for, Eng for the English Department. Um, great to have you on board. Um, now I'm going to talk you through a typical kind of lesson that you might see in Year 7 that's hopefully quite fun and quite engaging but also going to really stretch and challenge you because that's what we do at Chobham. We really, really try and stretch and challenge our students so you can achieve your full potential. Okay guys, so um, before we actually kick off the lesson, I want you just to um, take a moment before we start and have a think about three things that you love about English and three things maybe you found quite tricky or difficult in English in the past at primary. Because it's really important here at Chobham when you're moving into year seven to reflect upon your learning and what you found really, really positive and what you found hard. So that might be, I'm really good at spelling, but I find I find reading quite tricky or I always start a book but I never manage to finish it or um, I love reading out loud but I, I, I find it really really tricky reading at home or writing stories so I'll give you a minute for you to think about that now Great, so hopefully you've had a, have a little think about what your positives are for English and, and what you think you'll maybe want to work on. So then when you're moving into year seven next year, you can maybe set yourself some small, small goals using those. That'd be great. Um, we're going to move on to a quick quiz now. Um, and some of it you might know, but some of it you might think, oh, that's a bit tricky. And that's absolutely fine. Just leave that question out. If it's one you're unsure about, think, oh, OK, great. I know now that moving into year seven, I need to know that or I need to maybe do some research over summer or maybe work with mum or dad or your carers and think about um, learning the ones that you don't get right. So I'm going to give you five minutes. No, actually, I'm going to give you four minutes. Four minutes. You don't need to copy down the question, but try and fill in the blanks as best you can. Three, two, one, go.
Okay, so coming to an end now. Remember what I said, any blanks, don't worry about them as long as we're learning them when we're going back through the answers. So coming to the end now of the quiz and pens down now. Okay, so I'm going to go through the answers. I'm going to put them up and just talk you through them as best I can. Okay, so green pens at the ready if you've got a green pen or a red pen to try and mark your own work. Um, and let's go through them. Okay, so what is the job of a verb? A verb we know is a doing word. Um, and it describes an action, e.g. Johnny skipped down the street or Johnny ran. It's that doing word that you all, all should know. Um, what is the paragraph in a poem called? That's called a stanza. A stanza, a little bit of a tricky one. Some of you might know it. Um, I'm sure you would have done a lot on poetry in the past at primary. Um, it's called a stanza. This is a tricky one. What type of sentence would require a semicolon? So we use semicolons to add on to a sentence. So it's not really going to be a short sentence. It's going to be a complex sentence, which is a long sentence. You should all know this one. Uh, what do we use adjectives for? They are used to describe nouns. Nouns are names of things. The red bus, the pink bicycle. So the bicycle is the noun and the bus is the noun and the adjectives come before it to describe it. Okay, a blank is a comparison of one thing to another using words as or like in order to describe them. So he was as fast as a cheetah. That's a simile. We're going to be using them today to add to our descriptive writing. Writing your own story or poem or form of writing is called creative writing. I've put that in there because that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Okay, so we should have all got that one. Um, a blank blank using nature and weather in order to create a particular mood or tone is called pathetic fallacy. So a nice easy way to teach that and to remember it is if someone's maybe sad in a film or a book and they've had some bad news, they might walk out into the rain. Or if they just won the lottery, they might walk out to bright, hot, sunny weather and skip down the road. OK, number eight. Year sevens light up every teacher's day is an example of a metaphor because that's not literally what happens. I don't literally light up a teacher, but the metaphor there is that figurative language. The next one. The sun danced around the sky is an example of personification. Personification, because using a human quality to describe um, an object. So, for example, the sun. The sun doesn't dance. Humans dance. Personification. Um, and that's an example of that. And stories aren't just written down. They can also be told verbally. That's when we are talking and reading them and speaking them. OK. Tick up how many you've got out of ten. If you've got 10 out of 10, congratulations, or anything above 8, super fantastic. And if you're not sure about any, please just go back through and research them over summer so you're ready to start next year with a bang. Okay, so in our lesson today, we're going to be looking at descriptive writing. If you're working off paper, please underline that um, with the today's date when you receive this. Um, and our learning objectives today are going to be able to create a range, use a create a range of language devices based on an image and um, also to be able to write descriptively and I don't just mean write descriptively I mean write fantastically descriptively um, about a particular subject okay so why do we write descriptively why is it so important and why, what does it do to a story so my writing description might sound easy but we often get carried away with the story i see this a lot year sevens and year eights where they're like write a story about maybe greek myths or heroes and a lot of the time they get so excited it's just and this happens and this happens and this happens and then this happens and then there's a fight but actually what makes a story really engaging is having a mix of plot and narrative driving that forward but also rich and exciting descriptions. And we've got four re uh, three reasons why it is really important. It really helps our reader visualise the story. Where are they? What's happening? Really understand and transports them there. Um, it makes your story a lot more engaging um, and realistic as well. If you're really describing a location or a place or how a person feels there, 
really adds to the story and makes it a lot more believable. And lastly, it helps you to really show off and showcase your writing skills, how well you can use language and how confidently you've learned how to use language over all of those years. So a description is really, really important and we're going to really focus on writing descriptively today about an image because a lot of the times I've seen over the years as an English teacher, sometimes might, someone might do a quick description but they don't look really closely and really consider the location or the image that they are writing about. So we're going to really focus that today and use language to bring it alive. Okay, so this is usually a time where I would ask you to maybe work in your pairs or work with your partners um, or work on your table. But And I'd ask you the question, what do we want to see in exciting descriptive writing? What goes into it? What makes it a top mark or makes it really believable or makes you the next J.K. Rowling and makes it really fantastic writing? Today we're going to narrow it down to these key points exciting adjectives, exciting describing words, rather than just your normal plain ones, try and make them as exciting as possible. A sensory journey, I know that you would have done this at Key Stage 2, what you can see, smell, touch, taste and hear. Um, exciting but ambitious vocabulary, we've discussed this. If you have a thesaurus by your side, try and use that. If you don't, maybe if you're online, you can um, look for synonyms of words that you've maybe chosen, but don't worry if you haven't. Hopefully maybe you've got a good wild imagination you can use as well. Um, similes. These are our two bits we're focusing on, that's why I had them as quiz questions at the start. When we're comparing two images, the sky was as rusty as an old bike, or maybe using metaphors, so we're using language as exciting as possible. God illuminated the evening sky. Metaphor there because it's the sun illuminating it, and they're saying it's so illuminating, so bright, that it must be God doing it that particular evening, okay? Okay, so we're gonna have some fun now. We've got a task for you to do. All I would like to do, starting off with this, is look really closely at this image, and for the next minute, I want you to write as quickly as you can, as fast as you can, as many adjectives, any words that you can think of to describe it. Any words, just anything that pops into your head. You've got one minute starting from now. Okay, great. Now, what I would like to do now is try and think of one simile, one simile that maybe could describe this scene. It might be about the water, it might be the light shimmering of all the water, it might be about the ducks, it might be about the sun creeping down behind those trees. But you've got one minute to think of one simile. Remember, you, the sun was like, or using the word as, to compare it. Give it a go. Ready? Okay, last quick task. Um, I want you to see, and this is a real stretch and challenge, to see if you can you find a metaphor to describe this. Remember, that's not using like or as. So you might have used the sun was or the clouds were, but there's no use of like and as. You've got one minute, ready, go.
Okay, pens down, well done. Um, well, what I want you to do now is I just want you to have a read of just a small snippet of what exciting, maybe descriptive writing can look like with regards to the image of the sunset. So I'll read that out for you. A glistening line of light where the blood and water met and split the lake in half. Blood red clouds roam the ever darkening sky as the orange sphere slowly disappeared. Small black birds could be seen dipping their delicate bodies in and out of the shimmering water, trying to save you the final, sun's final moment. So if you can see in that writing, it's not just focusing on the sun. What we have is a focus on the clouds, the water, the birds. And that's what I want you to get from the descriptive writing, that you consider the whole of the scene. Uh, we could maybe have a bit more of a sensory journey, but what I want you to do now is take a moment, have a look to see if you can spot in that bit of writing any language techniques that I may have used. That might be a metaphor, an exciting adjective, a well-chosen verb, or a simile. Okay, so now this is your go now. Using the metaphors, maybe using your simile, maybe even coming up with new ones, that exciting adjectives that you use in describing the sunset, in being inspired by maybe my piece of writing, but not using it, because you're probably a lot more original and exciting than, than my writing. What I would like to do is your main task is write a description how the sunset changes over time. So think about it going from um, bright hot sun in the afternoon to coming down to sunset. So think about the changes in colour, um, the changes in light, think about the reflections on the water and have as much fun as you can. The challenge is to use a simile and metaphor in your writing. And I've left the success, success criteria there to make uh, to hopefully help you to um, um, introduce as much into your writing as possible. The last one there as well that would be for grammar and punctuation. Really consider this and take a moment when you finish to go back through and read with whoever's next to you just to check for your spelling, punctuation and grammar. So you've got 10 minutes to finish this. Good luck, give it a go and start.
Okay, guys, so that's the end of the lesson. I hope you really enjoyed the creative and descriptive writing and you've produced some really good descriptions of that sunset. Um, if you want to email them over to me, that would be great. It's r.monk at chubmacademy.org.uk. And if not, uh, have a fantastic summer. Um, we're really looking forward to you joining, joining the Academy and joining the English department.